What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius, back at it again with some Spy Family. Very excited to be getting back into this. It is also early in the morning. If I sound a little raspy, if I'm a little tired, I'm sure halfway through this episode, I'll be wide awake, exhilarated, super excited to be back in the Spy Family. Anya, Lloyd, Yor, the Forgers in general, very excited. Lots of hilarious, wholesome shenanigans I'm sure are going to occur. I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time. Make sure you guys leave a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell. And if you guys want the full-length version of these episodes or early access in the full length of the other shows I'm watching, make sure you guys check out that Patreon. Links are down below. Let's hop right on into this episode. It is called uh, Project Apple. Not a clue what that means. Let's do it. The father, a spy, the mother, an assassin, the daughter, a telepath. One of the hol most hilarious combos in anime history. One of the eight Stellas we've acquired after saving that boy's life. Shouts out Anya. And just like that, after a few months, it feels like we're back in the Forger residence. Like, we never left, you know? <laughs> Alright, mission 13, Project Apple. Today's the day. Okay, I forgot about that. Shouts out to Anya saving that boy's life, earning that Stella. You deserve it, girly. Absolutely. Understandable. Oh my god. <laughs> I always think ex-service uh, dogs deserve uh, loving homes, you know. Like police dogs, bomb sniffer dogs, all that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice them in the background. Those fucking war dogs, they're flexing. That's hilarious. Gotta use the bathroom real quick. <laughs> Not the shitter to shit, Anya. Watch your language, I know. Yes, an excellent assist. He's a good wingman, wing girl. Emergency summons the handler, Sylvia Sherwood, or someone else? Oh. Uh, playing playing some mind games. Oh, did they actually? Oh, they're, this is Twilight doing this. That is smart. This is like some Attack on Titan. I remember when they did this play in Attack on Titan. That is a smart play. Smart play, Lloyd. And then once you feel like you're backed against a corner, you have no one to rely on, yeah? You're just going to spill the beans. Honestly, kind of fucked up, but a really good play. That is crazy, and just like that, they got in his head. I remember, like, something, they were talking about putting bombs? Yeah, they were talking about something with bombs when they showed that little clip of the... of them and their crazy shenanigans, you know, a couple episodes ago. Yeah, that's horrifyingly dark as well. Bomb dogs? That's a good point. Mmm. We're getting a little deeper into this plot. The plot thickens. So this is more of a Lloyd solo focus mission to get us back into the mood of uh, some spy family. I'm loving this so far. These are some of the guys with some bomb doggos. That's so sad. He sees a kid, immediately runs towards that kid. Probably wants some to play. To be friendly. Oh, he saved that child's life. Oh my god. So, okay. This, and I don't know... If they were hinting at this last part, last core, and I just didn't catch it, but we have uh, a spy secret agent Lloyd, Anya the telepath, Yor the assassin, 
and the what has to be a future sensing dog that has to be it or yeah that has to be it shouts out to this fucking dog borf <laughs> i love the way they did that that was just i don't man i didn't that caught me so off guard Oh, you got, I've never been to an adoption event. They have all kinds of cute, adorable creatures. Kawaii. Oh. Now, don't get me wrong. I love all animals, but if I had to choose, I'm more of a cat dad myself, you know? <laughs> yes, that is what that means. Chihuahua, Pomeranian. I'm not the biggest fan of smaller breeds of dogs. I would want like a lab at the smallest, you know, maybe even bigger. It's our big boy. He's walking past. What a big Mr. Dog. She's she's reading the dog's mind and the dog is having a present, uh, a, a vision of the future seeing them or something. Or maybe the dog can also read minds or something like that. Now, I'm all for Anya going on her little solo adventure trying to save this doggo. Do whatever you gotta do. But anytime Anya's alone like this, especially with actual terrorists on the loose, I'm very nervous. I love his uh, color change from his white fur body to his black paws. Opposite of my cat, who's a tuxedo cat. Black body, white paws, you know. We call it his little socks. In order to restore Ostania to its former glory. Damn. Okay, so at least Anya knows this is a serious. These are bad guys. Yeah, this is how it goes. Now, if this was Attack on Titan, there'd be some stabbing and some murdering going on, but thankfully. They wouldn't dare to put a hand, a finger on Anya. Technically, he's holding her right now, but no. Your Lloyd? Mm -mm. Not having it. Ooh. Mr. Doggo is going ham. Oh, we will protect. He'll put his life on the line for this, this little girl. <laughs> As a mother, that's literally the worst feeling in the world. But that would be handy to be able to get a bird's eye view like that. <laughs> yeah, we got to get looking for her. Oh, the title of this episode, Project Apple. With terrifyingly high IQ for military purposes, well, they at least succeeded in one. That doggo is pretty smart. Ostania is kind of wild. Absolutely. I mean, that's what Keith just said. Don't damage the goods, you know, when they threatened Mr. Doggo. The unexpected may very likely happen. We can read his mind and see a vision of the future. I have to assume that's what that is. The phone's going to ring. They're going to look around because... Yup, and then that's our chance to do something. I don't know, but this is a crazy turn of events. We can make some plays with a future telling but mind reading combo. We can make some shenanigans go down. That was a great chance to escape and they took it. Oh, he really took it. Shouts out to Mr. Doggo. Ooh, look at this POV shot. Talk about an addition to the family. <laughs> a future seeing dog. And a fucking fluffy, adorable one at that. <laughs> You better get going, Miss Yor. Okay, the Anya and the Dogger combo. She's like, she's not nervous. She's full confidence ahead. Oh yeah, shouts out to Miss Stella Earning Girl. Look at this girl, oh my god. I need a whole sideshow with just Mr. Doggo and Anya.
no hard feelings. I just gotta snap your neck real quick. Oh. You ever seen someone bingo across the walls like that? We're playing <laughs> Mr. Perverted Kidnapper. If you, someone bounces across, oh my God. <laughs> no, it's already over. There's no way that was the first episode. I don't want to wait a week. I mean, I said the same thing about My Hero this morning watching it and it feels equal, equally as true for Spy Family, if not more, that it feels like no hesitation no waiting, barely any recap. We're jumping right back into it, right back into the Spy Family vibes and the, and the mood. I absolutely love that opening and ending. Oh my Lord. Um, <laughs> we're getting right back into the shenanigans. We promised to get Anya a doggo as her reward for earning that Stella, saving that boy's life. Absolutely all for it. Uh, animals, especially in a well-kept situation, can teach great responsibility, love, compassion, empathy, everything. They're perfect for a child. So shouts out Mr. Doggo, um, a future seeing Doggo that Anya can read his mind and see the future. That is insane. So shouts out to that insane combination. I was not expecting that. Meanwhile, we have a Lloyd investigating these terrorists who Anya happened to stumble upon. So that's how we're going to come full circle and reunite both our factions. But I'm just loving these little side, what do I call it, shenanigans that we always end up, you know, finding ourselves on. Anya is the most adorable. She gets herself into trouble all the time. Mr. Doggo was adorable as well. I love him. And his intelligence and how Ostania was trying to create some militaristic IQ level dogs and type shit. And it just didn't work out. And so some of them ended up going on the black market. And like for a terrorist attack to attack your own country's leader to uh, create sympathy, make him a martyr to then you know, cause a war for the betterment of your people is quite crazy, quite dark, and quite, an, quite a realistic uh, plot. So I'm thoroughly enjoying, like, that's one thing about this show. On the background, like, a lot of the things are super dark, super crazy, super realistic when it comes to war, espionage, but then we have um, just super wholesome, funny shenanigans going on, and it's it's that duality that I love so much. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you guys did as well. If you did, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, click that bell, check out that Patreon for the full-length version. Um, don't forget to drink some water, tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace.